Hi everyone. Today in this video we are going to discuss about anti-tubercular agents, the important concepts in easy way. What are the anti-tubercular agents? These anti-TB agents can be classified into two types based on their line of therapy. So they can be classified as first line drugs as well as second line drugs. First line drugs include isoniazid, rifampin, pyrazinamide and ethambutol. These four drugs are used as first line agents in the treatment of tuberculosis. And second line drugs include so many types of other drugs which can be added to the therapy when the first line drugs are somewhat ineffective or they produce few other side effects where they should be replaced with the second line drugs. So drugs like para-aminosalicylic acid, capriomycin, cycloserin, ethionamide, streptomycin, fluoroquinolones, macrolides, all these category of drugs are used as second line agents. You can see here if you have the antibacterial agents such as aminoglycosid antibiotics, fluoroquinolones, macrolides, all these are used as second line agents in order to control the tuberculosis which is resistant to the first line agents. And sometimes the resistant tuberculosis can also be treated by other drugs like linezolid and clofazamine. Clofazamine is one of an antileperal agent which can also be used to treat the tuberculosis under resistant conditions. Now let us see if you have the first line agents. The first one is the isoniazid. Isoniazid is actually one of the prodrug which is going to be activated within the mycobacteria. This isoniazid is going to be converted into active metabolites by one of the enzyme catalase peroxidase enzyme. This catalase peroxidase enzyme is present within the mycobacteria. So activation of isoniazid depends on the mycobacterial enzymes. So this catalase peroxidase enzyme is going to be coded by one of the gene CAD gene. So CAD gene is one of the important gene present in the mycobacteria which is responsible for the transcription of the enzymes resulting in the bioactivation of the isoniazid. Now once this isoniazid is activated it can inhibit one of the important enzyme INHA. This enzyme plays an important role in the mycolic acid synthesis within the mycobacteria. This mycolic acid is important for the mycobacterial cell membrane. Now this isoniazid can inhibit the INHA enzymatic activity thereby it can inhibit the mycolic acid synthesis within the mycobacteria. In this way, isoniazid can produce both bacteriostatic as well as bactericidal action. And isoniazid can produce three important side effects. It can produce a hemolytic anemia which is more pronounced in the patients who are having glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency. And another important side effect is the peripheral neuropathy. In order to treat this peripheral neuropathy, pyridoxine supplements can be given along with the isoniazid. And finally, hepatotoxin is another important side effect of isoniazid. And this isoniazid is only suitable for the mycobacterial infections. So, so this is one of the drugs which is having the narrow spectrum of activity. Similarly, few of the drugs can act on the RNA polymerase enzyme within the mycobacteria. This RNA polymerase enzyme can act on the DNA such that it is going to prepare a copy of RNA. So by the action of DNA dependent RNA polymerase, RNA is going to be synthesized within the mycobacteria which is blocked by a few of the drugs like rifampin. Rifampin inhibits the DNA dependent RNA polymerase thereby it inhibits the transcription and when the RNA is not synthesized, the proteins are also not synthesized. In this way rifampin can inhibit the transcription as well as translation. So within this class we have other drugs like rifabutin, rifapentin which can also be used as antimycobacterial agents. And these refer drugs produce few of the important side effects like orange red color to the saliva as well as urine because this drug is going to be secreted into the various body secretions. And hepatitis is one of the important side effect of rifampin and other related drugs. And interestingly rifampin is one of an enzyme inducer which can produce few of the drug interactions when this drug is given with the other drugs that are metabolized by cytochrome P450 system. Third drug is the pyrazinamide. This pyrazinamide again inhibits the mycolic acid synthesis by unknown mechanism and this drug is going to be converted into pyrazinoic acid which is the active metabolite and responsible for the action of pyrazinamide. This drug can inhibit the excretion of uric acid resulting in the increased levels of uric acid within the plasma. Therefore this drug may precipitate the gout in the susceptible patients. Similarly, another drug is the ethambutol. 
The cetambutol can also inhibit the excretion of uric acid just like the pyrazinamide. So it can also precipitate the gout. At the same time, this drug can also produce the optic neuritis. This optic neuritis results in the color blindness. The patients are unable to discriminate if you have the colors and it also results in some loss of vision and blurred vision. Now let us see the second line agents. One of the important second line agents is a capriomycin. Similarly, another drug is a streptomycin. Both capriomycin as well as streptomycin, these are the aminoglycoside antibiotics. And these drugs are going to inhibit the codon anticodon pairing within the mycobacteria. Thereby, they can inhibit the protein synthesis. And since these drugs are belonging to the aminoglycoside category, they produce two important side effects. They produce ototoxicity as well as nephrotoxicity. Next one is the cycloserine. Cycloserine is one of the drugs which can inhibit the cell wall synthesis within the bacteria. During the cell wall synthesis, the important building block is the n acetyl muramic acid, which is having a tripeptide chain. This tripeptide chain is converted into pentapeptide chain by addition of the a dipeptide which is made up of the alanine. So this dipeptide is nothing but the D-alanine D-alanine dipeptide. Now this dipeptide is going to be attached to this tripeptide on the n acetyl muramic acid which initiates the cell wall synthesis. Now cycloserine can inhibit the addition of this dipeptide to the tripeptide chain on the n acetyl muramic acid thereby it can inhibit the cell wall synthesis within the bacteria. But this cycloserine is having one of the important limitations. It can produce a neurotoxicity as the important side effect. So it can produce a peripheral neuropathy. Some paresthesias can be produced within the patients. And at a toxic dose, the cycloserine can also produce a convulsions in the patients. Similarly, another drug is the PAS, para-amino salicylic acid. Since this drug is having some structural similarity with the para-amino benzoic acid, it can compete with the PABA, thereby it can inhibit the folic acid synthesis. This para-amino salicylic acid inhibits one of the important enzyme, dihydroterate synthetase enzyme, which is actually responsible for conversion of PABA into the folic acid within the bacteria. In this way, para-amino salicylic acid can inhibit the folic acid synthesis within the bacteria. And this drug can affect the thyroid levels resulting in the hypothyroidism and it can also produce the hepatotoxicity as important side effect. Next one is the ethionamide. Again, the exact mechanism of this drug is unknown and this drug again inhibits the mycolic acid synthesis within the mycobacteria. And this drug produces so many types of side effects, particularly it can produce many of the side effects observed with the other second line agents. It can produce a neurotoxicity resulting in the peripheral neuropathy. And it can also produce optic neuritis just like the ethambutol and it can also produce a hepatotoxicity just like the isoniazid. So all these side effects can be observed with the ethionamide. So these are the various second line agents. Apart from these drugs, we can also use fluoroquinones and macrolides as second line agents. Now with this information, let us discuss other key points in question and answer format. First one. Which of the following drug can produce indiscrimination of red and green color? Options are A. Isoniazid B. Cycloserine C. Capriomycin D. Ethambutol So which drug produce some indiscrimination of recognizing red and green color? So the right answer is Ethambutol. Ethambutol is one of the first line agent which can produce the optic neuritis. And this optic neuritis results in that indiscrimination of red and green color. And within the second line agents, another drug is there, ethionamide, which can also produce the optic neuritis, which can also produce optic neuritis as well as color blindness. Second one, isoniazid inhibits metabolism of which of the following drug? A. Rifampin, B. Phenytoin, C. Linijorid, D. Atorvastatin. So isoniazid is a narrow spectrum antibiotic and this drug inhibits the metabolism of few of the other drugs. So here which of the following drug is going to be affected by isoniazid? So here the right answer is phenytoin. Rifampin is not affected that's why we can give the isoniazid plus rifampin as one of the important combination in the multi-drug regimen of the tuberculosis. But here phenytoin metabolism is inhibited by isoniazid. Similarly, isoniazid can also inhibit the other drugs like estemnophen as well as valproate, carbamjepine, 
theophylline and ketoconazole all these drugs metabolism is going to be inhibited by isoniazid third one which of the following drug can produce loss of hearing a para amino salicylic acid b cyclosirin c ethionamide d capriomycin so the right answer is capriomycin cyclosirin can also produce some neurotoxicity resulting in the peripheral neuropathy at a toxic dose it can produce some loss of hearing similarly para amino salicylic acid can produce hypothyroidism as well as hepatotoxicity and ethionamide is particularly producing the optic neuritis but capriomycin because it is a amino glycoside antibiotic which can produce some ototoxicity even at a therapeutic dose so this drug can produce some loss of hearing when it is used to treat the tuberculosis in the patients fourth one which of the following antibiotic is not useful in the treatment of tuberculosis a doxycycline b levofloxacin c azithromycin d amikacin so here which type of antibiotic is somewhat less preferred in the treatment of tuberculosis the right answer is doxycycline doxycycline is one of a tetracycline and tetracyclines are found to be getting resistance in the tuberculosis infections so in case of mycobacterial infections tetracyclines are somewhat less preferred but we can use the other antibiotics like the levofloxacin levofloxacin is a fluoroquinolone antibiotic which can be used to treat the resistant tuberculosis infections and azithromycin is a macrolide antibiotic amikacin is a amino glycoside antibiotic all these drugs can be used as second line agents in the treatment of tuberculosis but tetracyclines are somewhat less preferred because of development of resistance fifth one which of the following drug shows less metabolic enzyme induction quantitatively a rifampin b isoniazid c rifabutin d pyrazinamide so which drug shows the less metabolic induction so here we have to identify what are the drugs which are actually enzyme inducers so here two options are there rifampin as well as rifabutin both are enzyme inducers and isoniazid is going to inhibit the metabolism whereas pyrazinamide is not having any significant effect on the metabolism so two drugs which are here enzyme inducers are the rifampin as well as rifabutin so which drug shows less cytochrome p450 induction the right answer is c rifabutin rifabutin shows less enzyme induction at normal dose but at a high dose again it can produce the enzyme induction so when this drug is used at a therapeutic dose it shows less drug interactions because it shows less enzyme induction that's why this drug can be given in the patients who are having hiv infection and treated with the protease inhibitors in such case rifabutin is not affecting the metabolism of protease inhibitors there it will not reduce the activity of protease inhibitors in this way in the hiv patients rifabutin is more preferred because of less enzyme induction so these are the few of the concepts in the anti tubercular category in our next video we will come with more number of important concepts in the question and format so that's for today hope you have enjoyed this video if you like this video please subscribe to our channel share this video with your friends post your comments in the comment box thank you for watching this video